Okay, we're trying to find top dead center on cylinder one right now, which is this one. And I put a, a piece of aluminum TIG rod in cylinder one and cylinder three. And we've got this all apart so the directions don't really pertain to us. But one thing is you can see this little, where's the notch? There's a little raised notch. Oh, it's not notch, but whatever. A little raised bump right here. And that is the notch that corresponds with the notch cut on the crankshaft pulley. And when those align, that should be top dead center for cylinder one. Let's see it right there. And I'm pretty sure we got this where it needs to be right now, but we're gonna spin it clockwise. And we're gonna watch these rods go up and down. Now the next, the firing order on this is cylinder one, three, four, and two. So after number one fires at the top dead center, this one should be coming up. And we believe this is at TDC right now. Okay, bring her back to the top dead center. Right, right about there. Okay, so now we know we're at top dead center on cylinder one, and we can continue putting their new time chain in. But I should also make mention of if you're, you got to make sure your your camshafts are turned in a way where all the valves are either all the way up or just about to be pushed down, depending on what position you is have it in, but. You don't want to have it so one set of valves is down while you're rotating the engine because you're, you know, it's an interference engine and you don't want to bump into your valves. And if you're feeling any resistance, then turn your camshaft so that valve isn't hitting on the piston anymore. I should also make a note to say that right now we don't have the gears on our time chain connected to our camshafts. So when we turn the crank, it's not turning the camshafts. So just one revolution around you know it's four stroke so we start top dead center and then we have our power stroke going down and then when it comes back up again that'd be you know the exhaust stroke but it doesn't matter right now because like i said these these valves are not moving so we can just as long as we know that this piston is at the top dead center regardless of um, compression stroke or exhaust stroke that doesn't matter because we can turn our cams right now so once we get the chain on there we'll have to spin these around to set you know the appropriate exhaust or cam time uh, excuse me exhaust or intake timing based on the chain where the marks are on the chain okay after we found top dead center on the first cylinder we're going to install our new uh, crank, uh, excuse me, camshaft gears or sprockets and the way these are designed is these tabs are set a little off center so you can't install them you know like 180 degrees out. These tabs go in here. And like I said if you were to take this and spin it 180 degrees out that doesn't doesn't seat on there. Next we're going to get our new chain down in there and this particular one has two yellows that indicate this black here and we've got a black one over here and if I keep that kind of in position you can see there's another black one down here and these two that are close together are your intake and exhaust and that should indicate on the crankshaft sprocket. Right here this diamond is INT for intake and that should align with this black. This is a new sprocket for the crankshaft and it's hard to probably see on camera but there's a little dimple right here and that will be where this black link indicates. But for right now we're going to get this old crank, uh, excuse me, a time and chain oiler changed out for a new one, this is a new design, 
that has a little bigger port for the oil spray pattern to better oil the chain at lower RPMs. Here's our new one. This is our new chain guard. And this is that new bolt we had to make. Um, I'm not sure what a really good torque spec value would be for that, but we're going to do them the same as all of them, although I don't think it is really going to work the same because these this bolt was so much bigger, but I'm going to stick with the same torque value. Okay, we put some red lock, a lot of red Loctite on this bolt, and I'm going to install this in the upper location. And I want to use this Loctite because I don't want this to back out and destroy this again. And this one also came out and broke. So it will also get some Loctite. Okay, once we have our chain guide installed, it's time to put the exhaust sprocket on. Okay, this one's not quite where it needs to be. So I'm just going to try to turn this camshaft just a little bit so I can get this on the right link. There. Now, both the intake and the exhaust are indicated on these black links. Okay, we have the oil pan off here, and I ended up dropping the bolt for the chain guide tensioner down into the oil pan, and this also had to come off so we could find what was left of the other chain guard uh, bolt that broke off. So, I can hear some stuff rattling around in there. I'm shaking it all down to this corner, and I have a little magnet here I've cleaned off. We're fishing around in here. Fine. Like this is the bolt that broke. And there's the little guy that I dropped. Now I couldn't get this up in here without taking the chain off here, and that's of course moved it a little bit. I've heard on the message boards and everything that this is quite the pain in the butt and I could see how that would be out of the car because it's even a little bit of a pain like this. And my lines. Okay, we're seated where we're supposed to be on these. Both my marks are aligned. I'm aligned down here on this mark. Now, I need to put the chain tensioner in through there. In this one, the instructions say that it is already set and I do not need to do anything else other than screw it in here and set it to the right tension, or excuse me, the right torque. These will be tightened to 63 foot-pounds and I'm going to be using a, a wrench here on the hex on the camshaft so that I'm not torquing it on the chain. Now it says to torque to 63 foot-pounds and then an, an additional 30 degrees. Which is somewhat vague. Okay, I took all my spark plugs out and spun this thing around a bunch of times to make sure I didn't have any interference. And one thing I'll say is, you can see right now that everything's lined up the way it's supposed to be. But once you spin this around a couple times, you have to turn this thing over and over and over and over and over to get these to line back up with the actual marks here. Uh, you'll get like you'll get it keep coming around and around and around and you'll get it so it's like a couple links off but it's a couple links off everywhere so it's still all of these points are in time with each other but just the, the colors on the uh, the chain kind of move around I guess that's probably just the way it's divided you'd have to 
I don't know, count all the links and do the math to figure out how many times you have to go around to uh, get it back to this point. But I thought I would, I thought I'd screwed something up. I thought maybe this was off or something here, but anyway, that's that. Okay, got the front cover back on. I just installed the new oil seal and I've got this cleaned up. And the book says to put this in with a pusher, but obviously you don't need one. So now we'll take our new GM bolt, brand new. I'll have to figure out what the torque setting is, but we'll get that set now. And I'll probably use my little spanner wrench thing here that I made to uh, limit my my throw on here so I can actually tighten it. Okay, the manual says to turn this to 74 foot pounds. For step one. And step two is another 74, 75 degrees. And this will help me thereabouts guesstimate how many more degrees we gotta go with it. So if I wanna keep this, say this level horizontal plane is my uh, stopping point right about there from here so flat 70 degrees but it was actually 74 so push it just a hair down there we go done 